We want to have a conversation about retirement planning now. We're joined by Angela Diambo. She is the business development manager in charge of pension sales at Britain. Angela, how are you? Fine, thank you, Eric. Karibu sana to Kenya's biggest conversation. Asante sana. We call that the hot seat of the situation room. Okay. Yeah, everybody who comes in there, and to achieve 50,000 shillings. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, yes. because it's for retirement, we'll talk about how it shall benefit us in future. Yes. When we turn 64. CT. Yes. You're getting yours today. Well, as a man who is 65, <laughs> 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 I think I think that particular watermark nearly Peter Kidogo. Sindio. Yeah. Mm. So, in Arias. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you welcome Angela with the day's proverb, CT? I actually will. And somebody, Brian, is reminding you of your promise to give us two proverbs this hour. Yes, uh, he's reminding me. Yes. Okay. Mm. Um, our proverb for the whole of this week come from the country of Burundi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yes, this proverb was interesting. Today's proverb is even more interesting because it's simple, straightforward, and to the point. Without effort, no harvest will be abundant. Without effort, no harvest will be abundant. Yes. Uh, Angela, what's your interpretation of the proverb? Um, that is even in the context of our conversation this morning. Mm. Uh, yes. Say it again, City. Without effort, no harvest will be abundant. So that you won't get harvest. Mm. Yes. You'll get it, but it won't be abundant. Yes. So, so we have to put in efforts mm. for our harvest to be abundant. In our context this morning discussing retirement planning, then we need to put some effort early enough to make sure that our retirement is a happy time and we live an abundant life mm. at that particular time. Nice yes. one. Slide right in, right? It does. Very good. Second yes. proverb, City? Well, this one, yeah. it's one of these interesting proverbs that someone needs to pay clean attention mm. because it is easy to misinterpret. Mm. Okay? Mm. Are you ready for the proverb? I think so. Yes. All right. I am going to ad lib the proverb. He who wishes to help the mother-in-law cross a flooded river must touch her bottom. <laughs> <laughs> he who wishes to help the mother-in-law cross a flooded river must touch, touch her, her bottom. bottom. <clears throat> The reason is you're going to have to carry her. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you carry her on your back, whether you like it or not, you're going to touch her bottom. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes you must go through uncomfortable situations to get through. Abi? Mm -hmm. I am not going to speak further. Mm -hmm. Having mentioned the proverb, I will leave it right there. Mm -hmm. And leave it for people to interpret as they see fit. Mm -hmm. I think I like Ndu's interpretation of it. Yeah. Say again. Sometimes you must go through uncomfortable situations to get through or to get ahead. You must be prepared yeah. to go through uncomfortable situations, right? Yeah. Mm. It still comes into today's conversation, doesn't yes, it? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. For we we must prepare ourselves to help our mother-in-law cross the river. Cross the river. Yes. We must also then be ready to touch her bottom. Of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Angela. Yes. Retirement planning yes. is um, what you do yes, it at is. pensions yes. at uh, Britain. Yes. What is retirement planning? Just so that we are on the same page. Okay. So retirement planning is is a journey actually. So that's a process that you go through to plan for when you retire. It's not possible to to wake up one morning and say you're retiring, and you're you're stopping. You're stopping to work and you want to, to go into your, you know, your retirement and to relax. Mm. So you have to start through a journey which needs to be planned. So there's a process you follow, putting in place measures to enable you secure your retirement by the time you're getting to your most preferred age. Mm. So it's a conversation that we have because um, as a country, Kenya, then there's a need to empower our people to start that journey early and especially the younger generation because we have young people who feel they have a lot of time before they get to to retire mm. so then our message and and what we focus on as britam is to empower people to start planning early to put in place measures mm. 
to walk through that journey continuously and deliberately mm. so that by the time they're getting to their retirement then they're comfortable and it's and it's a, a joyful time right. in their lives yes when you're talking about retirement yes what age are you referring to um so we have different ages uh, early retirement starts from age 50 um normal retirement age is at 55 uh, the government retirement age is at 60. So anytime from age 50, you can retire. There are individuals who choose to retire early, um, not in this economy as much. Mm. Then there are those who retire much later. We have people, even in their 70s, we have city here mm. at 60, 65. 65 and still actively in the working. So That's the thing. Yeah. You when you say retire, retire from what? City is retired. He's just having fun with us, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it's, my my yeah. retirement officer has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. So, so retirement is when you, you leave gainful employment, mm. that you don't feel obligated to wake up every morning to go to work or to go to hustle. Mm. You can actually live comfortably for the rest of your life, that you're secured both financially and in the other aspects that you're well taken care of and you don't need to work any other day in your life. So you're getting that comfort mm -hmm. and making sure that then if you're going to work, then it's just for your, for purpose mm. or for, 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 for proverbs. For proverbs. <laughs> 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 or for yeah, whatever reason, yes. Yeah, everything you say is actually very true. Yeah. And it was true for a very, very long time. Yeah. You work for a certain period of time, and usually it's people who are permanent and pensionable. And upon retirement, they either give you a watch, a wheelbarrow, or gum boots. Gum boots. Yeah. And you supposedly, retirement meant going back to your rural home. Yes. Okay? Yes. But over time that has changed. People retire, they don't go back to the rural home. They visit the rural home, but they still stay in the places where they've lived most of their lives. Very true. That's one. Yeah. And in that earlier age, it was understood that the retirement plan was not the 1,000 or 500 shillings that you're given every month. It was your children. So one spent as much money as they possibly could to ensure their children got a very good education with the understanding that the children will support them as they get older. Yes. And in many, many ways it worked. Yes, it did. Then it changed. It changed because one, those permanent and pension jobs keep getting fewer and fewer and fewer. And when you look at the people who've retired, even when they've been in corporate jobs and they've gone home, many of them don't live long after they've retired. Yes. So, and some of them are comfortable. It's not that they don't have the money. There's a mismatch between the lives they lived then and then settling to the pace because the pace in rural setting is very different from the pace in town. But I actually think it's a socialization because most people retire and the bulk of the people they were accustomed to associating with they've left in town yes. and they go back home to start a completely new life now those who ensured when they were working if they ensured that they integrated themselves in the rural life then they settle in very nicely yes. and they just it's just they just step on and they continue but not many people do now how does the insurance industry step into this and how do they bridge this gap um very good point CT. um Th that that conversation has been there that the traditional forms of retiring where people used to of course depend on their children to be yes. their to be their retirement kitty for lack yes. of a better word um, and also the idea that we go back to the village mm. after we've stopped working mm. so that has shifted now um, and the other aspects that we look at beyond the financial security that you're trying to ensure you have by the time you retire we have the social aspects the community aspects so we take uh we take members through this we take um employees and and individuals basically through a training for them to appreciate that beyond securing their financial um funds and their their benefits and all that then there's a social angle how how will they integrate what will they do post retirement because then you're used to working every day you're going to work, you have a community in their office. Mm. Now you don't have these people anymore. You realize there are more of colleagues than friends. Mm. So then we take you through a training on how to cope with that lifestyle. What purpose can you find in that space? There are issues you face. Your kids are all grown up. 
you're probably alone or with your partner so then how do you find community in that space what do you do so part of retirement planning is to take people through these things and as britain we really focused in this area because we start the conversation early so even as we're helping you build your fund and showing you the options that you have to grow your retirement benefits we're also teaching you the social aspects mm -hmm. we talk to people who've retired before to give their experiences and the idea is to help you um ab get absorbed into the community comfortably and not feel now that you're you know you're no longer needed or don't have any purpose mm. by that specific time then we also do pre-retirement workshops so these ones we target people who are approaching retirement it's always easy to think and say i'm about to retire it's easy but it's never that straightforward so we we go through a, a process we even have counselors where we have conversations around what do you intend to do is the money you have enough um, are you even settled do you have a plan of what you're going to do and it's always a continuous engagement because these are people who need to be to be talked to on a continuous basis mm -hmm. yes so those are the aspects we really focus on even as we go through this retirement planning journey so retirement is a big deal yes it is in in, in life yeah. i mean we have entire authorities whole companies set up to deal with this uh, because it is a milestone um what do you need and i think because i think a lot of people are swimming in uncharted waters here yeah. because uh, we talk about it yeah put something aside for a rainy day do this do that but what do you really need when you're you know approaching or in retirement yes. that you should actually work towards in the years before you do retire all right very good question right there mm. so we always say you start at 18 most 18 year olds or 20 year olds will not think about retirement they'll always feel it it's way ahead it's mm. not yep. coming up mm. so we start early so the conversation starts from the point of what's your retirement goal? What do you intend to achieve? Do you want to maintain the same lifestyle then with what you're living now? Mm. Is your income going to be the same? Is, is the neighborhood you live in going to be the same and so forth? So that's where we start from. Then from that point, then we, we look at income. How much are you earning? We've had conversations where individuals say they don't have enough. Mm. I, don't, I don't make enough money to save. But we have tools that enable you to save even with as little as 100 shillings mm -hmm. or even 50 shillings. Mm -hmm. So you're not tied to a specific amount. It is you to plan yourself financially and say, I can even put aside 100 shillings or 50 shillings on a daily, 100 bob, 500 shillings. So you're able to now start building that fund. Then, <clears throat> sorry, then you also look at the time you have. How long do you intend to work? Do you want, are you looking to retire earlier, to maybe before 50? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to get to 50 or 60? So then you work towards that. So we give you a guideline. We even do projections. As Britain, we have very good tools mm -hmm. that we help our clients with. So we give you projections on depending on how much you contribute and the period you have and the interest this money is going to earn because then there's that interest factor. Then we can actually estimate for you how much money you would have by the time you're getting to to your retirement age then along the way we review is it working is it enough of course we encourage an increase depending on your income how much it's growing then you can always increase the much you're contributing if you started at 100 or 500 mm. or a thousand mm. then you grow with your retirement benefits mm. there will be some things that come inside here you know other responsibilities you start off you don't have a family yeah now you have a family yeah. mm. now you have a mortgage for example you mm. want to buy a car you want to change your your neighborhood and so forth so we walk with you through that journey just to make sure that we remain on course can you boost it if you can um, if you can't boost it can we maintain whatever we have for mm. now if there are any gaps then how do we address them as well mm. so it's a it's a wholesome um, training or support that you provide it's actually the larger conversation around financial planning because you can't discuss retirement planning without, without looking everything at, else yes yeah. so sounds it's also part of that all very good and doable yes you know when you when you hear it when you talk about it yes but from practice yes do you see people who start this retirement journey and they maintain it especially when all these other pressures start coming in all right yes so you're working you have what you thought was um, stable income, then that income is, is disrupted. You have new pressures coming in in life. You have, you know, family is growing. 
the societal pressure. I mean, everybody is buying land. Everybody wants to go to Lanet, Serenity Springs. So you're thinking, okay, I'm not going to be left out. So how much money do I want to put in there? There are all these other factors that come in. Yes. Do you actually see people who remain true to this journey? Uh, yes and no. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, a large group that remain constant in that journey mm -hmm. where their payment methods are consistent. So it is human that where you have to remind yourself to pay every month, mm -hmm. then you may struggle. You can even choose and say, I'm not contributing this month. Let me focus on buying a piece of land at, <coughs> sorry, at Serenity, for example. Mm -hmm. So we, we have mechanisms to follow up. Mm -hmm. So as Britam, we actually make regular calls mm -hmm. and engagement. So it's a regular engagement to know for the ones who are contributing, just to encourage them to keep contributing. And for the ones who are not contributing, then we understand mm -hmm. what are the issues. And you can imagine looking at the number, the sheer number of people we'd need to reach out of. Yes. One of the key um, advantages we have is we have a huge distribution network. We have over 3,000 financial advisors mm -hmm. who are spread across the country, mm -hmm. making our reach much more easier because then they're able to engage people in all the major towns that we'd want to engage. So that forms part of our engagement strategy that we are talking to these people on a regular basis. We are trying to understand the, the issues they are facing because, of course, as human beings, then we'll have all these challenges and might not contribute at certain times. Mm -hmm. The beauty with a pension plan is it's your own individual account. So yeah. even if you skip on a particular month, you can continue in the next month. Mm -hmm. So there's no penalty mm -hmm. for not contributing. At the end of the day, you're the one who determines how much you would have saved. But we, may, we take measures as an organization to assist people in that journey and just encourage them, show them the benefits, and where they're struggling, even provide other solutions to take care of these other struggles mm -hmm. and ensure that they remain on course mm -hmm. uh, with, with securing their retirement. You're talking to a younger and younger uh, demographic, yes. right? Yes. How easy is it to talk to them about pension, about retirement? Yeah. Uh, it's not easy, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, the younger generation, and I think this is... It's, it's, it's the same across. We'll always think that retirement is a far off conversation. You have a lot of time. You have, you know, 30, yeah. 40 years. But the years are flying. So, so we have those conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, some pick it up. You'll always realize that the older people from mid-30s are the ones who pick up such covers quite faster mm -hmm. than the younger ones. Why do you think that is so? Mm -hmm. Because... I believe for the younger generation, even speaking for myself at that age, for example, then you're thinking you have time. You're thinking... But is it that you have time or is it the way that message is packaged and delivered to you? Because talking to an 18-year-old about retirement, yes. that message is mismatched completely. Mm. Yeah. How do you talk to an 18-year-old about saving money in a way that relates to them, yes. in a way that saving makes sense to them? Retirement does not make sense. Yeah, true. Yes. Very, very true. So, so our solutions, yes. um, like I said, uh, we have the pension plan, mm -hmm. which, like you said, if you told someone about retirement, an 18-year-old or a 20-year-old, then they'll tell you, um, probably doesn't make sense for me. Mm, not, yes. not now. Not now. Mm. We, we can think about it later. Mm. Yes. But if you look at it, if you explain it in that journey, like it's a journey for you, that in as much as you're starting to save now, we will have the, the short-term needs. That Let you'll be taken care of, yes. Saving. Yes. This idea of saving. Yes. In theory, it's a lovely idea. <laughs> it's, re it's really nice. Mm. With the idea of when you save at the end of the year, there's this amount of money you can do things with. Yeah. The things that you say you offer do more for you than just saving. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Now, the other things that it affords a young person. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Just the aspect of insurance, for instance, okay? okay? okay. Explained and broken down so that a young person can understand why insurance. You know, at the 18, you think you'll never die. In fact, as far as you're concerned, <laughs> I mean, what's there to worry about? Mm. Illness is just a minor inconvenience. Yes. There are so many things okay. that a package like that offers yes. which can actually make sense. Okay. But in an African setting, saving people in this country have chamas. It's a way in which they save. We even have table banking, I'm told. Yes. Another such means of, 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 of getting people to get money together. How do you actually make this thing a cultural thing so that
people understand it to be the thing that one ought to do. You know why? Mm -hmm. When people save, then the very thing you're saying becomes very, very possible. Yes. When you then talk about retirement, it's not difficult for them to comprehend. Mm -hmm. But just to save the idea of putting money aside. Because yes. the bulk of the people who even earn regular income will tell you it is next to impossible to put money aside. So, what incentive must one have in order to make putting money aside attractive? Very good question, uh, right there. So, targeting the younger generation, yes. then the conversation would be, what are these things they need to take care of yes. immediately? Yes, yes. the things, the, the, the issues, the concerns that they have, mm. the, the short-term goals that they have, the things they, they have emergencies for, for example. Mm. A younger person would think, I'm planning to get married, right? Mm. So I need to save towards that. Mm. I want to go for a, for a holiday. I want to buy a car. I want to to go with my friends for a trip or anything like yes. that. So that's the starting point. These are things they can relate to. Mm. So then they can have a culture for saving for these things and they can appreciate the need for that. So then now when you start having the longer conversations now, you get married, you're getting kids, you need to save for that for school fees. You want to buy a house then. So so then it's a running conversation. And And I really agree with the point you made there that then the conversation needs to start from from what they can relate to at this point mm. to encourage them to save mm. so that now eventually now when they're thinking about retirement then it makes sense because they're able to deal with these smaller things here mm. and at the same time have a plan for the bigger thing that's coming mm. and it's possible to have different accounts for all these things for all these mm. yes let's talk about the products that you have so we have plans targeting individuals as well as corporates I'll briefly speak on the individual product. Mm. It's an individual pension plan where you can save as a person. You only need to put in a certain amount every month. Uh, we encourage regular contributions. We have different modes of payment. You can pay through M-Pesa, through a direct debit mm. if you're accessing through your bank mm. or check off mm -hmm. if you're, it's being done through your pay slip. We encourage people to do the contributions regularly in this account. The, the way of setting it up is very easy because you just need to fill a form, attach copies of your ID and PIN, and we are good to go. We have a customer portal where you can now manage this account comfortably. You can do top-ups there. You can withdraw from the same account if you wanted to, although we don't encourage it, but it's an option there. You can update your beneficiaries. You can withdraw everything. Yes, you can, as long as they are your own contributions, yes, mm. because it's your own savings. Okay. But we do encourage uh, people not to withdraw because then the plan is for the long-term need. Mm. So the individual account is for individuals who are not part of any organization but want to save on their own mm. if you get a lump sum from whichever source you can always put it in there so you're not limited to the regular contributions uh, so that's how an individual pension account actually works so that's called an individual pension account yes how different is that from just a normal savings account so the biggest difference here is you enjoy some benefits you wouldn't get from a normal bank account mm. so one there are some tax benefits that you'll get so there's some tax relief you enjoy mm. when you're contributing into a pension plan mm. number two you have the power of compound interest so we declare uh, returns on an annual basis which are applied into your account mm -hmm. and this return is compounded so your fund is able to grow at a much faster rate you have the benefit of access to our other products since Britam is a diversified organization providing different solutions. Mm. So because we, we know you and we have access to information, then you have the opportunity to access other products at discounted rates, which not even be able to get if you're not part of our, of our books. Mm. We also have member education forums where we bring these people together and just train them and educate them and teach them more about their retirement and guide them through that journey. Okay. So then that's very different than if you are saving in a bank account where you can access this money mm. whichever time you wanted to access. You wouldn't enjoy the tax benefits you'd enjoy in this account and so forth. There was something about a mortgage. Yes. Right? There's a, uh, they can, there's a mortgage benefit here. Yes, Tell us about it. So you can, you can assign up to 40% of your of your pension benefits as collateral for a mortgage so that's a regulation that's there mm. uh, just to help you access a larger benefit than if you are not um, you are not part of a pension scheme so that way if for example you are 
going to be given say 8m by a financial mm. then they probably even give you more to take care of the early costs the costs you incur like stamp duty fees and so forth when you're taking up a mortgage so that's just a benefit the government has put in place to enable people to so up to 40 percent of what you have saved you have in saved. your pension account yes and the idea is that even if you defaulted it's your house for example that will be it will be taken away not your pension benefits because mm. these are secured and the idea is for you to access them after you have retired mm. yeah okay yeah. so then how do these kick in later um because yes. so now you get to whatever age it is and yeah. then what you've been putting away how does that then play out so at the point of you signing up mm -hmm. whether as an individual as a corporate so let me just circle back corporates can also uh, sign up for our pension plans we have a very good product for smes uh, organizations with even as less as, as little as two employees mm -hmm. can actually take up a pension scheme where both the employer and the employee are contributing. So whether you're doing it as a corporate or as, a, as an individual, you can choose whether you want to sign up into what we call a pension fund or a provident fund. A pension fund means at the point when you retire, you can access up to a maximum of one third of your fund. Mm. Then the balance of two thirds will be paid to you as a regular income. That's a pension fund. Yes, that's a pension fund. Mm -hmm. When it's a provident fund, then you can access everything as a lump sum. Mm. So now that's... Say that again. Yes. So for a pension fund, yes. you contribute and upon retirement, you can access only partial yes. as a lump sum. Yes. Up to? A maximum of one third up to 30 percent 30 percent of the fund of the fund yes then the rest comes in as regular payments as regular payments monthly or payment. quarterly or yearly yes what is that so that is a product now you purchase post retirement so there's a solution we call an annuity where now we sell you a product that you give us a lump sum and then we pay you a regular income for the rest of your life so for as long as you're alive you're guaranteed an income mm. yes but the income is based on how much you have of course definitely based on how much <laughs> you have the lump sum you have i can give you a million then i'll be wanting a million every month <laughs> yes so now <laughs> you get a whole lump sum <laughs> yeah so it, it's dependent on those factors right but what it ensures is you have a regular income that is guaranteed mm. for the rest of your life mm. yes so then these were these other options that you've given us in terms of then how you put money aside yes how does that kick in then when i get towards retirement you start paying me something a little bit per month or you pay me one lump sum for year over a couple of over a number of years how exactly does it then play out so that whatever period you choose yes. quarterly that you have something yeah. that you live off on so so, so so what we'll do of course if it's a pension fund we pay you the lump sum mm -hmm. the 30 percent then for the 70 percent we compute for you if you have 10 million for example as your retirement benefits mm -hmm. and we pay you 3m as 30 yep. percent then the 7m will compute for you a certain amount that will be your regular income you choose how you want us to pay you mm. whether it's monthly quarterly semi-annually or annually so we determine that we, it's actually a quote mm. giving you different options mm -hmm. and other benefits if you'd like mm -hmm. whether you wanted a last expense benefit, mm. whether you would like to medical. even have a medical cover mm. at that particular time mm. because medical is also a big need yep. for retirees so we, we factor in all that in there mm. we agree you sign off then we start paying you on a, on the regular basis so you'll have a, an income yeah. that you get but that who determines regular. britain will determine how much yes we, we give you the options. 7m that yes, i have of the 7m yes yeah. okay yes. what are you basing that on so we base it on the, of course the amount that you have so let's say it's a yes. 10 million that I had you've given me the 30 percent yes. 3 million you've given me up front i have chosen to pick i don't have to right yes you don't have to. i can still say this 10 million put it into the annuity yes so what what are these matrices that you'll use to determine how much i get the biggest matrices will be the amount, mm -hmm. the 10M or the 7M, whichever you'll have gone with, mm -hmm. and your age. Uh -huh. Yes, that's, a, that's also a big, a big area we look at. Okay. Yes, so that is what will determine mm -hmm. the amount of money you get every month. Okay. okay. Yes. What happens in the um, inevitable event of death? Mm -hmm. If somebody has put a lot aside and unfortunately passes, what happens? Uh, so within the arrangement of the annuity, this product that you've purchased post retirement, are we talk so so there's a difference post and pre. So if it's pre, mm. when you've been saving, you have a huge amount of money, you haven't even retired yet, yet and then you pass on. So you'll have nominated beneficiaries at the mm. point of signing up. So we'll pay your beneficiaries 
those funds. Okay. The full amount. The full amount. Okay. As a lump sum. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So everything you have accumulated will go to your beneficiaries. And that's how you see some people even use it as a legacy planning. Mm. You use your pension benefits for the benefit of your of your beneficiaries or your kids or whoever it is you want to yes mm. for your estate now post retirement if you have signed up with the annuity then if something happened to you when we give you the computation of how much you'd get every month we provide a provision for your beneficiaries that even when you're not there mm. your beneficiaries still get to to benefit until mm up to a certain period mm -hmm. so you choose it uh, so you can say do they benefit for the next 10 years or for the next five years or for the next 20 years so it's x number of years after i die yes, yes. Mm. but until i die i shall be receiving until this you die, you shall be receiving that. okay and you actually have an option of even in joining your spouse mm. yeah that we can pay you if something happened to you the payments revert to your spouse for the rest of their life as well who is the custodian of this and i ask this because yes. <laughs> you just know how it is in the event that somebody does pass yes. and that this money has already been put aside and you have who your beneficiaries are. Yes. Okay, let's say children, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if those children are not of age, obviously to manage for themselves, yes. I would assume that um, you wait until a certain age and then you start to pay yes. these children. Yes. Who is the custodian of this to guarantee that because this who's gonna check you're not there right mm -hmm. and one would assume that you were the soul yeah. whatever yeah. who who would make sure that these children will get what was left for them okay so the normal way we do it mm -hmm. currently as kenyans is we have if the beneficiaries are below 18 years of age then you have a guardian mm -hmm. so you nominate a guardian who will take charge of these funds mm -hmm. and take care of your of your children mm -hmm. so now we have those concerns where people say they're not sure if I'm not there, mm -hmm. this person I have nominated, mm -hmm. will they be able to to actually step in and take charge? Mm -hmm. So then there's the option of, of setting up a trust, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. So that's an option you can choose, which many people are now doing. Mm -hmm. So that now that way you have a more formalized way of managing these funds. Mm -hmm. That even if you're not there, you have actually determined and said, this is how I would like you to treat these funds. This is how my people are supposed to benefit and so forth. Mm. So you're able to, to, to allay those fears you may have mm. that the guardian or whoever you've put in place might not do what you'd like them to do. Okay. Yeah. I know a lot has been done in terms of regulation and, and all. Uh, yes. you, reti you are regulated by the Retirement Benefits Authority. Yes. Now, talk about the security of the funds. I'm putting in money for retirement, which is X number of years down the road. How secure are my funds through this period and even after retirement? Yeah, very good question right there. And I know it's usually a big concern for many clients wanting to know you're saving with us. How safe are these monies? So one, we are regulated. So we operate within the Retirement Benefits Authority's regulations. They even define for us how to invest the money because we just can't invest wherever it is we want to invest. Mm. So there's a guideline that we abide by and comply with those regulations. <clears throat> the other uh, guidance that has been provided that these funds are held separately from the companies investments mm. so pension benefits have a custodian who holds the monies and the assets away from from the organization so that that way then the members benefits are secured that even if something happened to the organization which in the case of britain i don't see that happening mm. but if it did then your pension benefits are still safe secure. and they're secured yeah mm. so you can be sure that's taken care of can only move to the next provider and they continue meeting the obligation so let's talk about where an organization an sme or a big company yes. opens a fund yes. with britam yes so they deduct money from the employee yes. and they're also contributing yes. some money to it in the event of non-remittance mm -hmm. of funds yeah to this uh, pension fund what happens so so non, <clears throat> sorry non remittance can be a factor of them not having the funds anymore yeah. to remit which means they're not even paying their employees yeah. that would be a factor the other factor would probably be that they are deducting but they are not remitting yeah just yeah. poor corporate governance yes mm -hmm. so we make follow-ups on that we actually we have an sla an agreement that we agree by a certain date they should have remitted the money so then if they haven't then we do a follow-up on the same we have to notify the regulator also to come in so, so we can check with these people how come they are deducting money from the employees and not remitting because remember when the monies don't come to our end they're also losing out on 
the interest because mm -hmm. interest is earned from the day the money comes mm -hmm. so we have a, a, a vibrant framework even the trustees that we have in place would make follow-ups and just make sure that these organizations are complying so how immediate do you kick in because mm -hmm. i'm looking at it as an employee of, a, of this company yes their money has been deducted at the end of the month and they're receiving their pay yes. okay yes Ideally, it should have been remitted within a few days. Within by, by like the fifth or the ninth of the next month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And interest starts accruing immediately. Yes. Now, this is for the benefit of that employee. Yes. If the company has not remitted in a month, two months, three months, four months, the disadvantage is to the employee. The employee. Yes. So, how soon do you kick in to ensure that the actual benefit is being realized by the employee, the contributor? So, we kick in immediately. By the date by which we are expecting the funds to have come through and they don't, we make a follow-up. Every scheme that we have in our books has a relationship manager. The relationship manager is responsible for managing all the activities of the scheme, making sure that funds come in, they are posted, statements and so forth. All those administrative items are taken care of. So immediately monies don't kick in, then we are also following up and finding out immediately what's the issue so that we make sure we don't have a lapse that we have several months and funds have not been remitted so we would not have a case where a month misses and we haven't made a follow-up and even reported the same yeah you know the economic situation we have in this country yeah is one where we unfortunately have more and more people losing jobs that afforded them a regular pay yes now in such circumstances if somebody was a regular contributor and uh, this unfortunate occurrence visits them, how do you handle such cases? So we'll know, we'll know that something has happened because we are continually engaging them. On a monthly basis, we normally call all these clients and have some form of engagement, either even through the agents that we have on the ground. So if something happened, for instance, they lost their job, then we'd have a conversation. Uh, within the pension arrangement, there would be no penalty or anything they would incur. They can choose, we'll, have, we'll discuss and agree, do they want the funds to continue being there and earning interest? They don't need to contribute anymore because they don't have a, a regular source of income. If they're really tied up, can they access a portion of it? Some of them would want to use it to start maybe something they want to do. That is an option. We would encourage them not to touch it if they don't really need to touch these funds. But if they needed to, then they can access those money. So it's an engagement we'll have with them. Um, and of course, beyond even the pension account, probably they would have other products that they have with us that would be affected. So then it's for us to, to provide a solution to them how well would we be able to help them transition during this stage mm -hmm. and for the specifically the pension benefits they have an option of having them continuing an interest without them having to contribute further. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Britain is an insurance company, is it not? Yes. Can you insure against such occurrences? Yes. There are, there are policies to take care of retrenchment and so forth. Mm. Yeah. Yes, so when are. people go into uh, these financial arrangements that we're discussing, Yes. And they do not foresee they'll be retrained, they do not foresee that company will shut down. Yes. Do you also advise them at the very onset that given the uncertain terrain that we now live in, yes. perhaps you could consider taking an insurance, blah, 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 blah. Is yes. this part of the package? Yes, it is. The member education forums that I mentioned, and I like that question because it just speaks to some of the activities that we do for these clients. Mm. When we have them in these forums, we talk to them about the other products that we have. Mm. So we are not just on the retirement planning journey with them. We encompass all the other solutions that we offer as Britam. So they are aware. They are aware of these other covers that are available and in the eventuality of something happening whether it's the retrenchment or even death. We have last expense covers, um, medical issues, we have health insurance and so forth. So we're able to provide them with all this information. And by virtue of them being our clients, we even have discounts just to give them fair deals when it comes to those products. So yes, we do share that information with them. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, you're looking at, obviously, so looking at the lifeline of all of this, and then one often asks the question is that, how then are you able to ensure that this money is is coming back yeah very simply what do you do with the money that then makes it possible for you to pay people more money later 
So we invest the money. Mm. We we have to invest the money because we declare returns on a regular basis. So when we collect these funds, we invest them in a guaranteed fund. Mm -hmm. So the fund we run for our individual clients as well as the SME is a we call it a guaranteed fund. Mm. The biggest benefit with this fund is that the member can never get a negative return, simply put. Mm. It is guaranteed, their capital is guaranteed, and then the interest is also compounded. So since we're in a competitive market, we endeavor to give the most competitive returns for them. For the last 10 years, we have an average of about 10% that we have offered. Mm. So just speaking to how much we want to give them, mm. the best in terms of the returns that they can earn from their benefits. Mm. So we, we have a team of experts in our investments and treasury team who work now to look for the best assets where they can invest this money. Pension is a long-term business, so then, of course, they're looking to have assets that can sustain for that long 20, 30 years in terms of the investment income that they can earn. Mm. Yeah. There's a question that uh, Patrick is asking. Something is not clear on that uh, annuity yes. thing. Yes. Mm. <laughs> He's saying, assuming that you've given Britain the $7 million yes. to start paying yes. post-retirement, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you pass on after a short time. Yes. She said that they'll be paying next of kin for X number of years. Yes. Does that mean if those X years have passed and the 7 million has not been exhausted, what happens to the balance? So that product, <laughs> the annuity, <laughs> is an insurance product. Yeah. Uh, the flip side to your question is if this person outlives the, the 7, seven million. million we still keep paying so it's a balance between that yes so, that, so, so if i if i die before the seven million exhausted we will pay your beneficiaries up until the number of x years mm. then the policy ends yeah i see yes so we give you options when we do the quote mm. just for you to choose what will work best at that point at that point of yes. retirement yes okay Technology, of course, yes. is a new and it's a big thing. How has Britain embraced technology and what are you doing now, especially for pension funds? Yes. What kind of technological tools are you using? So we have a customer app for our pension clients. So clients can actually sign up online. They don't need to fill forms or visit one of our offices. Those options are still there, but if the, for those who prefer uh, the digital way, mm. you can actually sign up online. What's the app? The Britain customer app. Britain customer yes, app. Yes, if you just go to Play Store, mm. you can be able to access it. Okay. It's a customer app. How do you register? You you just log in. Mm -hmm. you, or not log in, you, you set up your credentials. Your yes, yeah. set up your account. Put in your details. Then you can begin contributing. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. How will I know that I'm actually, uh, have downloaded the right, the right Britain app and not some con man who's... <laughs> On, on, on Play Store, it's very clear. <laughs> Actually, we even do the training on right. how to sign up and okay. all that, and even how to maneuver through the app, okay. just for you to be able to know what, what to do, where to go. So from that platform, you'll be able to make contributions. Mm -hmm. You can top up. Mm -hmm. You can withdraw if you wanted to access a portion of your money, mm -hmm. update beneficiaries, check how your fund is growing after interest has been applied and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can actually do everything there. But for those who are not comfortable with technology, then we have now the, the analog way you can actually go to any of our branches. We have branches across the country, mm. uh, over 30 branches. So mm. you can just go in, sign up and... Is there a, a website where I can see the branches? Yes, yes. Where I can go and search, I mean, locate your nearest Britam? Yes, yes, we do. Where yeah. is that? What's so that our website? our website is, is www ke. Mm. Okay. Yes, so you can log in there and so check. So app, website. App, website, mm -hmm. yes. Then we have, like I mentioned, the financial advisors. Thousands of them. Mm. Mm. So there's a joke. We have a running joke that anywhere you go, you'll always meet a Britain financial advisor. Mm. <laughs> yes, so these are people you will always meet. Mm. They will. We so we go out. We even have workshops mm. across the country where we go with our financial advisors and engage with clients and mm. prospective customers. Mm. So then, if you have someone you know who works for Britain, then they can also help you sign up with this process. Mm. Mm -hmm. We also have a WhatsApp number which I can share, yep. where you can also write to us if you're interested. 0793 uh, 304927. 304927. Yes. 0793 Yes. That's a WhatsApp number. That's a WhatsApp number. Mm. So if you wanted to just chat and have a conversation, you'd be helped there. Mm. If you wanted to make a call, our mm. number is 0705 mm. 100 100. It's a simple one. 0705 
100, 100. Yes, you can also be able to. And it's uh, manned 24-7. 24-7. So if you have an issue at all, you want to talk to somebody at Britam, yes. 0705-100-100. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, Angela, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me as well. Mm. Yes, I think my parting shot, especially for the younger generation, is to start saving mm. and to start saving today. Yes. That's a good one. Yeah. I agree. Yes. Angela Adhiambo is the business development manager for pension sales at Britam. She's been here telling us about the Britam pension solutions and also the evolution of retirement planning how you can navigate the challenges of uh, and embrace technology with this. She says you can talk to them at any time, 0705-100-100, or you can S WhatsApp them, 0793-304-927. You can download the Britam app. It's called Britam Customer, Customer app. app Yes. on your Play Store. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.